after Easter service. I wasn't so sure about that one. It's great to see everybody. A few announcements. This is a great time to support the youth at this church. Uh, the youth ministry here is selling flowers for Mother's Day. If you're going to forget to buy your mom something, you might as well get the flowers now. If you do, they get a great hanging basket, and you're supporting the youth to go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, do mission work. That's a great thing. They are also selling soup and sandwiches. Eat your support. <laughs> wedding soup and sandwiches. It's a great way to support them to go to camp and let them uh, experience God away from the busyness of everyday life. We're actually going to talk about pilgrimage uh, a little bit today, so that'll work well with that. Now, to other things. There's no Bible study this week. There's no Bible study this week. The pastor is uh, going to Florida. Uh, I get two days wow. of crisis and four days of sitting in a Marriott lobby watching my daughter do cheerleading with very loud music. <laughs> so, uh, no Bible study this week. And then the last announcement is this. I truly believe that the Bible is the living word of God. It is of vital importance to read the Bible. I truly, truly believe that. God has preserved this word for us for thousands and thousands of years. So Bob Gray and Faith and Life have made it even easier to read your Bible. They got the NIRV, which is the New International Reader's Version. It's very reader friendly. It's more storybook. They're in the back. He has four different ways for you to read your Bible. You can read it chronologically, uh, yearly, there's papers back there, different ways to read your Bible. These are free. We want you to read your Bible. I would love for all those to be gone, and we have to buy more Bibles. It's a very reader-friendly version. Why not read the Bible and see what God has to tell you in your life? I can't express this enough. We are a Bible-believing church. Grab a Bible. Grab one of those papers. Get a plan to read through this and see what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you today. Okay. All that being said, oh, I also want to say thank you to all of our young musicians today. Terry Pitt, Power on Piano. <laughs> uh, Jake Forbes. Uh, is this a xylophone? Percussion. Dueling percussion. We have Jake Forbes. And Julian Hillen. <laughs> Jake, what's the round of applause now? <laughs> you know, if they don't clap later, it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> With all that being said, let us worship the living and the loving God. Oh, happy birthday to Phil, 30 years old. Beauty 
kicked off, Julie. All right, I'd like to invite the kids up the children's message. Children's message. Come on up. Sorry, I'm trying to get some of the candy we have to hide so Annalise won't keep stealing it.
guys were watching John Wayne for all these years. You don't know what? I'm glad you came. I'm going to teach you. <laughs> it's an insult, apparently. It was when West, West, when people in the Wild West would call big city folks coming from the East because they were soft and they were over their head in the wilderness. And so they would call them pilgrims. And I get it. This is how I feel when people come from the metropolis of Greensburg to Mount Vernon. <laughs> Pilgrim is seen as less. Pilgrim is somebody on a pilgrimage, sure. But is somebody seeking deeper spiritual understanding, or even spiritual redemption. How many of us go on pilgrimages? How many of us get away from our daily life and truly seek out to hear the word of God? I think we see God in day-to-day -day life all the time. But how many of us separate ourselves from all the noise all the busyness, truly, truly try to hear God's Spirit. I can't tell you how many times somebody comes up to me and says, you know, hey, Pastor, that was probably the best sermon I've ever heard in my life. And also, yeah, thank you for not laughing. <laughs> I saw the ones that did that. <laughs> They, they say, you know, I just, I love church, but I just don't know the Bible, or I don't know Christianity as well as everybody else does. Now, if I asked for a show of hands, I'd see a lot of hands up. So that's what bothers me is, first off, a lot of you feel that way. A lot of you feel that way. My second thought is, you need a pilgrimage. You need a place where you can go to truly hear God's Spirit talk to you. So earlier I said, how do we take pilgr pilgrimages? Unlike those people in the Psalms, we get them to walk around Israel. So what does it mean for us in Mount Vernon, or Boston, or Forward, or whichever place we are in right now? The truth is, it's different for each one of us. We have different personalities and experiences. But God calls each one of us to be pilgrims. Now, I'm excited to tell you this next part of the sermon for a couple of reasons. One, I think it would be really good for your faith. And two, it lets me use my undergraduate cartography. So, buckle up and hold on to those views. The key to a pilgrimage is finding place. Finding place. There's a difference between place and space. Space is... Uh, the yard or building or something like that that you have no connection to. It's just a place. Somebody that's never been to the sanctuary before and never had any kind of uh, care or love for it, this is just a place. To you it may be a space. Or place, I'm sorry. <laughs> now you're confused. You're good to that. Place has Tradition it has experiences, it has smells. We used to drive up to a two-story house with a big front porch. You had to park on the street because it was in the city. And I would run up to the side of the house. It's a double lot. It's the only double lot in the city. And I would run into the house for two reasons. One, I was excited to see her. And the other reason, there was a pear tree in the side yard and bees would gather to eat the pears. Oh, how I hate pears. <laughs> as soon as I walked in the side door, there was a kitchen. It smelled like whatever was cooked for dinner that night. And it always smelled like some kind of pie or a tart that she had made. And then at a U-shaped counter, there were three stools, one for each grandkid. We'd sit and play cards, and of course drink from our special glass. I'm from Pittsburgh, I call everything I drink out of glass. It's clearly metal. I'll take note, this is not an antique. It's not valuable in any way. I could not sell this for 10 cents. And I would not drink out of it because I'm sure I would get some kind of poison, lead or tin or whatever this is made of. It's pretty rusty in there. I think that's why they stopped making metal glasses, right? To everybody in the world, this is a piece of junk. But to me, this reminds me place 
is more special in my heart than anywhere in the world. My grandmother's kitchen. A place that I can't go anymore because she's passed on. I don't think they would like me coming in and hanging out with her. <laughs> this cup reminds me of a place. A place that I feel comfortable. A place that I feel so at ease. A place that I can hear God better. Now, I want everybody to take note about the psalmists. They were on pilgrimages to places, not spaces. They would go to the temple in Jerusalem to worship God. They would walk in the footsteps of David, returning the Ark of the Covenant to Zion. They turned their eyes to the hills to see God, just as their parents and grandparents had done. All of these things were places. They weren't random spaces they went to. So the temples tore down, and we live thousands of miles away from Israel. Jesus has consecrated the entire earth as holy. It was created and sustained by God. So let me ask you, what are your places for pilgrimage? What are your places? Places that you love. Places where you feel comfort. Too often we seek God out in busy spaces instead of caring places. There's noisy kids, TVs, iPads, phones, schedules, work, social obligations, and a myriad of other things to distract us from God. What we need is places where we can seek to intimately dwell with God. We have to have these times. We see God in everyday life, but where do you go when you need to truly hear Spirit of God. Where are your places? Can you name them? Can you make a list? Is it a sunset or a sunrise at the beach? Is it a deer blind? Whatever that is, I don't know. The suburbs. <laughs> is it a walk in the woods? Is it this sanctuary? Is it a boat on the river? Is it a blanket on a hill? I have a space near my house. I walk 20 minutes through the woods, and I come upon a waterfall, and I sit at this bench, and I hear God speaking in the rush of water. The noise of the rush of water drowns out the busyness of my life, and I'm given peace and clarity to listen, truly listen to the Holy Spirit. I can't tell, tell you how many times I've asked people, how do you listen to God? Where do you listen to God? Where is your place? <clears throat> do you know that? Have you thought about that? Where can you go to truly hear this Holy Spirit? Because there's too many distracting things in this world. We seek out God in every place that we are. But where is the pilgrimage place for you? Where do you go when you really, really, really need to hear God's Spirit talking to you? Where is that place? If you can't name two or three places off the top of your head right now, it's time to do some serious thinking. Because God calls you pilgrimages. It's how we grow in God. It's how we know what to do with our life. It's how we can hear the Holy Spirit speaking into our souls. Pilgrimages. It's a reminder for us to be intentional about seeking out God. It's a real reminder that we need to seek out God in our lives. We see him in dated, dated events, sure. But we can't ignore these psalms. The people that every year they go to the same places to truly hear God. To truly find God. In our psalm this morning, he said, we look to the hills. Because that's where our help comes from. At that point of the pilgrimage was this place where they could look up on high, and that's where they saw God. For me, it was at that counter with milk in this cup. Where's your place that you seek God? If you don't have it, create. Now, we can't do this every day. But we need to do it sometimes. In our world today, you might have to put it on your calendar. 
It'd be interesting. Your husband will say, you watch the kids today, and you'll say, sorry, honey, I'm on pilgrimage. <laughs> it's that important. It's that important. We all want to know God, but we have to seek God. We have to listen to God. And how can we do that in a world full of, full of busyness and noise? So God gives us places. He gives us experiences and space. It tells you, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. That counter in my grandmother's kitchen was holy ground for me. For you, it's nothing. For me, it is the holiest of spaces in this world. So listen here, pilgrim. <laughs> If you want to know God better, you have to take pilgrimages. You have to. You have to find these places. You have to identify. You have to say, God has made this place for me. And here is where I will go to hear God's Spirit speaking to my soul. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. The psalmist knew it. They knew where to go to hear the Spirit of God. They had looked to the mountains, and then they'd walk to the temple. Where is God calling you? Where is your pilgrimage? Where is your place to simply stop and listen to what God has for you in your life? Don't be pilgrims. Hear the word of God.
filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
We also respond by giving our tithes or offerings so that God's word may be spread in the beyond. Ushers, please come. Thank you. 
Thank you. 